Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jeanne and I'm back with another video. So today's video is going to be a little different than what I'm what I usually do. Um, today is going to be more about mental health. Back in October, November, I did about 10 days of a clean thinking series and it was called Jeanne's Mental Health Snacks clean thinking series. I'm going to do more of these more often, but I did it on Instagram and Facebook. So what it was is I had 10 tips just for clearing your mind um, and correcting some old habitual thinking that causes errors in our day-to-day -day life and creates anxiety and the depressed hopelessness feelings. Um, so that's what I did. So I just want to go over these tips. I think they'll be great. Um, for all that we were trying to accomplish this year, all that I know I'm trying to accomplish, they're great for me. Everyone could really utilize them all to make sure we get going and get out of our heads a little bit. So this series is a little bit for my overthinkers, the ones who are hard on themselves. So before I get into this video, please like, comment, and subscribe and share this video. Um, Yeah, so let's get into this. So the first clean thinking, snack that I gave was focus on your now okay so focusing on your now means acknowledge what you've been through acknowledge who you are acknowledge your past acknowledge your future but also focus on who you are right now today when we spend a lot of time in the past or thinking about the future, we tend to worry ourselves like, oh my gosh, am I where I'm supposed to be now? Um, am I moving fast enough? Am I getting everything done? Or, oh, what about this? This person hurt me. This person did all of this to me. And it starts consuming us. So we start neglecting the things that we actually got to do. So there's nothing wrong with knowing that, oh, I want to be this someday, but we got to really try to shut out everything sometimes and focus on what's in front of us because what we're doing in front of us is preparation for, for getting us where we're trying to go. So when I did this tip, I also did this exercise. I said, for more reinforcement, list three to five or as many as you're willing to list positive feelings, thoughts, or things that you're experiencing in your now and positive characteristics of yourself. Also, write some words of encouragement. Fold the paper up and keep it in your wallet. Review. Read out loud, aloud if possible. That's really great when you're able to say it out loud and hear it. But if you can't, that's all right, too. So, read it out loud if possible. This sheet, every time thoughts about the past or the future are tormenting you, then proceed with your task. Try it for th two weeks. Amend the list as needed and document what this intervention is doing for you. So that's a really great thing to reinforce focus. I'm great. I'm doing well. I, I did better. I'm doing better. Um, I'm focused. Today's going to be a good day. Um, I'm smart. You know, just things to, to, to build yourself back up so that you can focus and stop thinking about the thing you didn't do yesterday or the thing you didn't do a month ago or the thing you're trying to get to that you can't seem to grasp. So focus on your now for clean thinking snack number two we have a good day does not equal the absence of flaws this one's a really good one for me um i used to think a good day was flawless i used to think i didn't really have too many good days because every day seemed to be flaw but if we really think about it, when we say good, that's a subjective term. It's based upon what each and every one of us think. What I think is good, someone else might think is bad. What someone else might think is bad, I might think is good. So I can alter good to mean anything. So since it's subjective, we have control over whether we really see our day as good or bad. It's not based on the things around us. It's based on how we perceive the things around us. So how we do this is we... Think about our day when we reflect or when we're struggling or we think it's a bad day. Pick something good that happened. Even if it's just, I made it through the day. I made it to the end of the day. Everybody cannot say that. So it was a good day. It was a good day. I got food on my table. It was a good day. Like I still have my job. It was a good day. So just find the silver lining in every day. Every day isn't gonna be amazing. I don't think any day is going to be flawless. I've, at least I've never experienced a flawless day. Um, but I had to change my perception of the things that I saw throughout the day. Like somebody said something to me and I didn't respond. 
like I would typically respond. It was a good day. I saw growth today. That was a good day. So make it a good day. Force it to be a good day. Find the silver lining to make it a good day. Clean thinking snack number three. All victories matter. I love this one. This is what I had to learn for myself. Well, honestly, every snack that I'm telling you guys about, I had to learn for myself. But this one was huge for me. All victories matter. This means even, okay, for an example, I struggle with getting up in the morning a lot. I was doing good for some time, but I don't know what happened. I struggle a lot. So, Say I haven't been getting up on time in forever and I've been telling myself I'm going to get up on time and I still haven't been getting up on time except for this one day. <laughs> Good job, Johnny. You got up this morning on time. That matters. We have to celebrate ourselves. We have to celebrate every change. We have to celebrate everything we accomplish. It's nothing too small or too big. Like when we celebrate the little things, uh, we we feel better. Like and, and we can't wait on other people to celebrate us. We can't wait on the recognition, the award, the 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 uh um, what employee of the month or whatever we can't wait on that because we got to learn to appreciate and celebrate ourselves before anyone else can we have to value what we see in ourselves um a lot more like you you wash the dishes today like you know i completed the paper congrats i did it i accomplished everything on my to-do list to-do list Look, I usually accomplish two things in my to-do list, two out of 10 things, but today I, comp I accomplish five out of 10 things. That's half. Good job. I'm making progress. You know, I, I like to tell people any progress is good progress. I mean, if you're doing better, that's, that's amazing. Like, that's praiseworthy. So celebrate yourself. All right. So clean thinking snack number four, no self-diagnosing. All right, so this one is something I've struggled with for like physical diagnosis in the past and it would make me worry, but we have access in this generation, we have access to a lot of information via internet and um, we tend to type in our symptoms or somebody says they're experiencing something and these are their symptoms and then we realize we have the same symptoms. So we're like, I got this too. But in reality, that don't mean that we have it. We, we got to... We got to go to the professionals, whether it's a physical illness or a mental illness. We got to go to the professionals so we can get the accurate diagnosis and treatment. Because honestly speaking, even with mental health, one person with anxiety may have panic attacks and they may be um, scared of speaking in front of people. And while this other person doesn't experience that, they might have nightmares at night. They might not experience panic panic attacks at all they might worry often about a lot of things that may seem to be random like everyone's symptom presentations are different so we want to make sure that we're getting the correct diagnosis so we can get the correct treatment okay and and speaking greatly about mental health here obviously because you know these are mental health tips but we go to the physical doctor when we're physically ill so let's go to the mental doctor when we're experiencing difficulties okay and i just want to say this like there's no shame in needing to get a counselor at all there's no shame in needing to get a psychologist there's no shame in any of that like good job you, you are you are doing something to help yourself that's what we got to do sometimes i've done it before like i've gone to counseling before we need it like we really do need it sometimes we need somebody um who who's um educated in this area to help us map out some of the things in our head or map out some of the things what we're experiencing and you know they take into account genetics um and things like that what runs in your family what's your social history your you know physical history all of that because all of these things combined make a diagnosis you know and when we're getting diagnosis from the internet, it's not taking all of that into account. It's not taking your biology, your social history, and all of that. It's not taking all of that into account. And when you go to a professional and you get an evaluation, they're taking all of this into account when they're giving you a diagnosis. So it's really important that we do that because each person's situation is very different. So no self-diagnosing 
um oh and i want to highlight this everything on the internet is not true it's it's just not true sometimes bits and pieces of it are true but it's not always all true we got to go to the people who studied this who went to school for this don't be ashamed and i want to speak to people who think you know it's kind of hard with their particular culture but ultimately honestly i know we have our preferences but therapists counselors social licensed clinical social workers um they're all trained to work with various cultures and people with different backgrounds and there's a big part of it is not being biased and learning from the person about their culture um so don't be afraid to go to somebody and um and don't be afraid that they won't understand what you're going through you know this is something they're trained in and and if you feel like they don't understand tell them you know this that place is that space when you're in that office or building or whatever is there it's, it's confidential everything stays in that room so i mean there's a few limits to that you know hurting people and child abuse things like that but ultimately everything stays in that room so it's okay. You'll, it's a safe space. Just try it. You know, just don't be scared to try it. It might be a scary thing. Maybe you don't know anyone who's ever done it, but you just try it and you never know. You might love it. Clean thinking snack number five. Self-care is vital. Self-care is like maintenance for our mental and physical health. We need to take care of ourselves. Like self-care can range from a different, from Honestly, you can do whatever makes you feel relaxed. Self-care is something to relax you and to take your mind off of things and to make sure that you're okay, you're refueled, you're ready to go, you're not mentally exhausted. That's what self-care is because if we don't take if we don't take advantage of self-care, then we're just going to be this person with nothing in us trying to work and we're we're just is it, we're gonna have we're gonna break down eventually just like with the car a car has regular maintenance if you don't um get it serviced when it's supposed to you, you can keep going and it's gonna work but over time more lights are gonna come on so that causes more issues um and on top of the more lights coming on eventually it's gonna break down and now you're spending way more money than you had to spend if you had got if you would have spent if you had gotten it done earlier, fixed earlier, or you might not even have the car anymore. And that situation is like us. Like if we don't take care of it now, it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And next thing you know, we're just spiraling out of control. Self-care is very important. And honestly, I went through most of my life not knowing how to relax. Honestly, that was not fun. I just did not know what relax meant. Someone said, relax, what is that? Like, I was always tense. I was always, I just couldn't relax. Like, I couldn't relax. I went through, I've been through insomnia. I was waking up throughout the night. And that was just normal for me for, like, almost a year. And I just didn't know what that was. So, I had to really learn self-care. I had to really learn how to relax, what helps me. And self-care for someone might be different for you. Someone else might be different for you. So, you might... Think, okay, I just need to take this time and read a book. I mean, you need to take this time in instead of taking a shower, maybe I need to take a bubble bath, lights out candles, and relax. And even read a book if you want to read a book while you're in the bathtub. Or it might be watching TV, playing this little game really quickly, or um, and even going out with friends. Sometimes that social aspect is needed as well. So going out with friends tonight, that might be your self-care because you've been just isolating so much. And that recently that was my self-care. I was just you know, doing everything I needed to do and all the air and all the things that I do. Um, and I wasn't spending any time with friends and I was like crashing and I realized I needed like my social life was suffering. And that's why I was like feeling the way I was feeling. So once I went out, went and did something with my friend, I was like, oh, oh OK, you know, I'm good. Like, I'm great. So that's what self-care looks like. So you want to make sure you take advantage of that for yourself it's for your mental health and it's for your physical health you need this you need to take care of yourself so this concludes my video i hope that you guys understood what i was saying i hope you guys get this and i hope that they're helpful for you all um they were they're helpful for me so i really hope this helps you kind of like you know think you know clear your mind you know prevent 
yourself from being over analytical and um and just worrying i know this helped me greatly these tips helped me this isn't the last time i'm gonna do clean thinking the clean thinking series isn't over and johnny's mental health snacks isn't over this other series that i'm gonna start as well so please look for it for it on instagram at underscore underscore john a underscore underscore and twitter which is the same thing so please 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 if you enjoyed this like comment subscribe and share if you know anyone who needs this please share this with them um i also you see the posts that i made on instagram so share that with them as well share this at hashtag johnny's mental jmhs clean thinking series johnny's mental health snack Alright, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon. I've been experiencing any negative thoughts or emotions about you, your life, past, present, or future, substances and or others that affect your day-to-day -day life. It is okay. You are not alone. Honestly, you are not alone. There are people out there who can help you manage and or heal. If that is you, contact your local health department, community services, or insurance, and they can direct you to the right place to seek help. If you are experiencing intense negative thoughts or emotions now, please feel free to call the free and confidential National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 or text HOME to the National Crisis Text Line at 741-741 in the U U.S., 686-868 in Canada and also 85258 for Canada. And call 911 if there's an emergency or imminent danger.